Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Today is Monday, July the 13th. It is 11.59. Uh, we're going to start off with the sound saying this morning. Hope you all had a wonderful weekend. Uh, this sound saying is coming from Joshua chapter 1 verse 5 and it says as I was with Moses So I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee as I was with Moses. I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee uh, and this is a true statement because God literally sticks by your side no matter what side of the spectrum you are on. Whether you know him uh, or not, he will be carrying you before you even recognize that it was him all along. Your family have forsaken you long ago. Your friends have forsaken you long ago. But when you think you're standing there all by yourself, you're never alone. God is always nearby, always nigh unto thee, even when you don't know him yet. Ah, that is a good God indeed, and these words are exactly as they are written. He will not fail you, nor will he forsake thee. Amen. Now the back is coming from Isaiah 40 verse 8 and it says, The grass withers, the flowers faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Not only will it stand forever, these words are holy and when they are read or heard, they do have the intended effect on the listener. Do you hear me? When you read these words or when you hear these words, they do have the intended effect on you because why? They are holy. Okay? That's why I don't like babbling. Babbling is meaningless. Now, I have some key words here that I like to give you. It pertains to the reading that we're going to do today. We're going to be reading from 2nd Timothy, and since this is our first time reading 2 Timothy, we will get an introduction into the reading. But prior to that, I'd like to give you a few words that pertain to the reading. Um, put this aside for a minute. The first word is an adjective. It is called rampant. Rampant. Like um, something that occurs in great mass numbers. Okay? Violent in acting or spirit. Raging. Furious. That is what rampant is. Uh, in full swing. Prevailing. Unchecked unrestrained, widespread, a uh, pandemic, Epi uh, epidemic, pervasive, out of control. What is this? The sins of our world is running rampant. It has been running rampant for some time now, um, 262 years. It has been Slowly, slowly, inching up to where it is today. Today it is out of control. Even the laws today that are, are created to support that which is wicked, that is out of control. Okay, and this is why we know that the leaders who are implementing these changes are wicked themselves. This is why I say pay attention to who you vote for. You want to pay attention before they get to where they're intending on going. All right? Every, every, every vote counts. Every vote counts. Your vote makes a difference in the outcome of any election. So if you have no issues 
You should be a registered voter and you should take part in the election of your leaders. This is why your ancestors fought so hard so that they can take part in such an important matter. All right, it's not for you to ignore it because when you ignore that which is there for you to do, you actually make the efforts of your ancestors null and void. All right, so these words pertain to that which is going on in our world today. Sin is running rampant, okay? It is unrestrained worldwide, everywhere, in every continent. It is running rampant, all right? It's like gangrene of your limbs. It spreads quickly, okay? Sometimes we can incorporate things in our world that that destroys the moral foundation of this world. And it is destroying it rapidly. All right? Perseverance. <sighs> Perseverance. Continue in a course of action even in the face of difficulties or with little or no prospect of success. Okay, this is for the servants of God, that we should be persevering now. We should be reading the word of God now to the nation so that they may hear that which they need to be reminded of. Okay, uh, we have to, what does perseverance mean? It means to be persistent. It means to continue, to carry on, to keep on, to keep going to hammer away, to struggle on, not to give up, uh, to press on, to press ahead, okay? But we must do this with what? With the equipment we've been given, the word of God, not your babbling. will have no intended effect on the people of God. Only the word of God shall we use, not our own words, all right? And this is why it's important to not cherry pick through the word of God. You are not to be cherry picking. And this has been going on for some time now. All right. If a verse, if a chapter has 15 verses in it, you are not to select which one of those 15 verses you're going to read to the people and then use your own meaningless words to replace the other 12 verses. No. You ought to give the people of God all 15 verses because God is speaking to the people through these words. And when you chop them up, you take and chop up the message of God. I hope you're hearing me. Okay, because we will all be held accountable. I'm not going to help for anybody. So I will give it to them according to the will of God. Like it or not. Because God says give it to them even if they will not hear it. All right. Next word. Let me highlight these. This way I know I spoke to you about it. Devastating. Devastating. We do know what that means, don't you? When something happens in your life, it's devastating. It affects thee strongly. It brings grief and sorrow. Well, this devastation is what God is feeling. He is devastated over the conduct of his people on his earth. He is devastated. Okay, highly destructive or damaging. That's what devastation means. Highly destructive, causing severe shock, distress, or grief. 
all right? Shattering, traumatic, overwhelming, crushing, savage, terrible, distressing, gut-wrenching, very great, extremely upsetting. My God made men and women for a purpose. Why? He told us in Genesis to repopulate the earth. But if we're matching two of the same sexes together, how are we to repopulate the earth with this abomination going on? Do you know that now humans, humans are the endangered species? Not the animals, humans are. But you're so concerned about satisfying those desires of the wicked. Protecting them. Destroying our world for their sake. Tearing down statues that have been there forever. Cost no harm to anyone. They're just statues. They tell a history of this world. All right. Prevalence. These are all words that tie into this reading. Prevalence. Full of danger or risk. Treacherous. Vulnerable. Imminent risk of disaster or ruin. Uncertain. Desperate. Critical. This is what we put ourselves in. When we begin to ignore the laws of God, this is where we are. We're in a critical state, morally. Okay. Um, and it says, the Spirit of God gives His children what? What does the Spirit of God give us? He gives us power. Okay. He gives us a sound mind. Huh? He gives us love. He gives us boldness. This is what the Spirit of God gives His saint and servant. So that we may do that which He desires of us. He gives us courage. These are what you need. To spread the gospel of God. Okay? It is not. Fear. The Spirit of God does not give you fear. No matter what's going on around you, you are not to be fearful. For He knows exactly where you stand. Every one of us that belong to God. Everyone. Okay? Persecution. What is that? It is hostility, ill treatment, especially because of race, political, or religious belief, okay? Of the three, the religious belief is the most dangerous of them all because that addresses the moral fabric of the nation. That's why you need courage. Okay? It points it out. It unveils it. All right? So it's hostility, ill treatment, especially because of race or political or religious belief, oppression, punishment, annoyance, victimization, torment, harassment, teasing, abuse. Molestation, discrimination, bullying, all this is part of the lot of the servant of God. Even Jesus Christ did jail time. Do these servants do jail time today? Absolutely not. In 
if I read something from here and you want to throw me in jail for it, so be it. All right, devastating. Discernment. The ability to see things for what they really are. That is discernment, okay? Not for what you want them to be, okay? That is discernment. That comes from God, all right? Ability to obtain sharp perception or to judge well, okay? The quality of being able to grasp and comprehend what is obscure. Okay? Things that are obscure today is the way to go. But you know, no matter how good you try to hide something, that five o'clock shadow will tell it all. The power of discerning keen perception, keen perception and judgment, insight. That is what discernment is. You cannot get it from the grocery store. You can't get it from your pastor. Okay, obscure. Keep from being seen to conceal something. All right, to hide it, eclipse, to cover, to veil, to screen, to mask, to shadow, to block, to envelope, to overshadow it. That's what those do when they change their sexes. Okay? And then they try to deceive people. But you, when you end up dead, people got a problem. Well, you should have been honest and told the individual that you were really a woman or that you were really a man. You are not to be deceptive. It may be all right with your parents, but to the person who you deceive, it is not all right. And their reaction is appropriate. Shunt. Persistently avoid, ignore, or reject. The word of God is shunt today. The commandments of God are shunt today. The laws and sanctions of God are shunt, shunt today. We don't want to hear it. Okay. Keep ignoring it. And this pandemic will be the least of your concerns. And you can say you heard it on spiritual water. All right. Now let's go to the reading. Since this is our first time reading 2 Timothy, what do I always do, brothers and sisters? I give you an introduction. It's very important. And someone asked me a question the other day. Uh, do you see that I have on clothes? Do you notice that? Whoever that was. Okay. The introduction to 2 Timothy, it is written by Paul the Apostle. Okay, it dates written between A.D. 66 and 67. Uh, from Paul's second recorded letter to his associate Timothy. All right, background. During Paul's first missionary journey, John Mark leaves, but Timothy is his able replacement. Through the years, Paul and Timothy become like father and son as they co-labor to bring the gospel to the world. But now Paul is alone in a cold, hard Roman prison, and only Luke has not forsaken him. So all the rest of the disciples have, done, have just uh, abandoned Paul at this, at this point, and Luke is the only one hanging around. Even his son, beloved son Timothy. Okay? This is man for you. And even if the disciples 
of, of, of our Lord had issues with abandonment, we will also have that same problem. All right. As Paul awaits his execution, he uses this occasion to write what is probably his last recorded letter. Paul, longing for Christian fellowship, is anxious for Timothy to come and see him at Rome before winter sets in. To where written? Probably a Roman prison. To whom? To Timothy and those of us who take the time to read this letter. Contents. In spite of Paul's dismal uh, circumstance, his primary concern is for Timothy and his ministry, since Paul is concerned that when his own death comes, God will have eternal house waiting for him in heaven. Paul admonishes Timothy to never be ashamed of the gospel, but to persevere in faith and obedience. There's that word, persevere, I gave you earlier. He then instructs that in the last days, in which we are in the last days, in case you didn't know, there will be a devastating turning away from God. And it is devastating. You haven't seen nothing yet. Oh, we got much coming our way. And you will not be prepared for it. If you do not bow your knees and honor the Lord, he will make you do it. Make you. Call out his name. Okay. He then instructs that in the last days there will be a devastating. And this is this is prophesied back in the biblical time. Of these days today. God. He then instructs that in the last days there will be a devastating turning away from God as men glorify sin. Okay, when you protect it, when you pr place laws to protect it, you are glorifying that particular abomination. All right? And that those who harm the ministry of Christ shall be a void. Okay? The Word of God is presented as the power and inspiration of God to complete and equip the believer for service. Paul concludes by asking Timothy to come see him soon. Okay, so as you can see, our elder really wants to see Timothy before his execution. Okay, key words in the book of Timothy. Endure. Teach. Even as Paul has remained strong while in prison, he encourages Timothy to endure his trial as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Timothy is admonished to flee youthful lust and to follow because Timothy was, was, was younger to him, young Young enough to be his son. Okay? So he was encouraging him to flee from his youthful lust and to follow faith and righteousness. Then he can teach the things of God to faithful men who will likewise teach others. Okay? Things. These are PowerPoints. I've always said that to you. These are facts. Number one. The Spirit of God gives his children the spirit God gives his children is not one of fear. You are not to be afraid. No matter what's going on in your life. You could be stranded in the ocean, in the desert, in the canyon. You still should not be afraid. Okay? Because God knows exactly where you are. He knows what you have need of. And normally, when you're going through such a situation, it's a life-changing moment. When, you're, when you come out of that situation, you have a totally different perspective about life. And isn't it awful that God should have to take you there? Isn't that awful? Okay. Um, the Spirit... God gives his children is not of fear. It is one of power, of love, and of sound mind. Persecution is a certainty for those committed to living for Jesus. Every word of 
the Bible is inspired by God. Every word. Okay? Christians shall avoid dispute and quarrels who are not to be quarreling over the word of God. It does no good. If they receive it, great. Hallelujah. If they don't receive it, that's on them. It's, they cannot say, someone did not try to tell you. Okay? Though all may forsake us, God will always remain true. Always. You don't have to doubt it at all for all your days. All right? Let's go to um, chapter 3 of 2 Timothy. And that is, this is a very short verse. It's only 17 verses. Uh... It has uh, gold for prophecy, black for sin, a significant amount, uh, brown for Satan, pink for witnessing, red for discipleship. We will be reading it from both the Rainbow Bible as well as the New International Bible. All right, um, let's begin. I'll be doing it color by color. The title here says, Rampant Sin in the Last Days, Paul, Doctrine and Examples, and the Inspiration of Scripture. The first verse is gold for prophecy. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Prevalent times shall come. Okay, reading it here. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. Verse 2 to 5 is black for sin. I will read it straight away. It says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, ungrateful. Okay, three. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers. Oh, yes. <laughs> Women just come out of the woodworks 10, 20 at a time, destroying the life of an individual over something that happened 20 years, 30 years ago. Okay? Inconsistent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Four, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Okay? Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Okay? It says, men shall be lovers of their own selves. It speaks about homosexuality here. All right, let's take it from uh, 2 to 5. People will be lovers of themselves. It says men. I'll try to behave, Father. Jesus Christ. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient, to their parents, ungrateful and unholy. Three, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good. Four, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Five, having a form of godliness that denying, but denying its power, having nothing to do with them. Okay, six and seven, and eight are brown for Satan. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sin, lead away with divers lust. Seven, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Eight, now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. 
men of corrupt minds pro reprobate concerning the faith. And these are the people who are in power today. That's why they implement these laws. They're even in the Supreme Court, Lord God. Six to uh, eight. They are the kind who warm their way into homes and gain control over weak-willed women who are loaded down with sin and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires. Seven, always learning but never able to acknowledge the truth. Eight, just as Janice and Jimbris opposed Moses, so also these men oppose the truth. Men of depraved minds who, as far as faith is concerned, are rejected. Okay, so now we're rejecting God and all of his laws. And we think we're going to um, not pay for it. We think that that was just for Sodom and Gomorrah. We think that we can get away with it because it's been over 200 years and God has not done much yet. Okay. Nine. But they shall perceive no further, for their folly shall be manifested unto all men, as theirs also was. Nine. I need a Bible with bigger words. But they will not get very far because as in the case of those men their folly will be clear to everyone all right 10 and 11 is pink for witnessing but those but thou has fully known my doctrine manner of life purpose faith long suffering charity and patience 11 persecution afflictions which come unto me at antioch at iconium as Zystra, which persecuted I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Amen. 10 to 11. Paul's charge to Timothy. You, however, know all about my, te my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance. 11. Persecution, suffering, what kind of things happened to me in Antioch? Iconium and Sidra, the persecution I endure. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. Twelve is go for prophecy, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Yes, sir, it is part of our lot. It is part of our lot, and you should take it willfully. But I'm telling you, some of us are like Paul, some of us are like Stephen. You don't know who we are until you approach us. Period. Okay, 12. I need a Bible with bigger words. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ will be persecuted. 13 is brown for Satan. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are more likely to find a deceptive person then you are to find a righteous one today. And yes, they come on sweet and tender and loving. And then sooner or later, they show their true side. That's why today you must be extremely careful. And trust God. Trust Him with all that you have and all that pertains to thee. And if Somehow, God should separate you from someone. Don't cry. Bow down and thank the Lord. Hey, 13. 
while evil men and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. 14 is read for discipleship. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Amen. You learn them from man. Uh, 14. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it. Okay, 15, 16, and 17. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. See how much reading the scriptures will bring about into your life correction huh reproach instructions okay so it is proper profitable doctrines all right not written by the foolish thinking of man but holy men of god written to us long ago 17 that the men of god may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works 15 to 16 17 here and how from infancy you have known the holy scripture which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in christ jesus 18 all scripture is god breath and is useful for teaching rebuking correcting and training in righteousness 17 so that the man of god may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And that is all 17 verses of um, 2 Timothy 3. Thank you very much for listening to the word of God. For you make his day. When you listen to his words or when you take it upon yourself to read his words, it will do you good. More good than the food you put in in your stomach okay and when trouble comes and like i said to you when you read the word of god you are putting on your armor okay you are putting on your armor it's like when you're out in a ship and the ship is sinking instead of putting on all of the equipment that will help you to survive in the cold ocean water you jump in there with your bare skin. Okay? These words are what, it, what you will need to, to be able to fight the devil. Ah, uh -uh. Okay? The devil can see if you are naked or if you have your armor on. He always looks for an easier target. Always. So it's a deflector. To put on these armors, your helmet of salvation, put it on. How do you put it on? Not like you put on your shirt. You put it on by reading it. Okay? You read the word of God, it gets into you and it stays right here in your heart. And when the devil comes near you, he can see that you have it on. Okay, so you save yourself a whole lot of trouble by putting on that armor of God. Thank you very much. My name is Brenda Guerrero, and as always, my brothers and sisters, may the peace of God be upon you. May the protection of God surround you, and may the will of God, not your will for your life, his will for your life, come from thee. Until the next time, please enjoy this beautiful day, and thank you again for listening.